All right, Blues, City take on Newcastle this Saturday. So who else could we ask to come on to our Skype preview? It's the one and only. It's the true Geordie. Welcome on, Geordie. Nice to meet you, pal. It's good to be on uh, Blue Moon Rising. Yeah, it's fa- good to finally have you on after uh, you uh, controversially beat Walter 3-1 in the past. Yeah, some so. would say controversial, I'd say emphatic. <laughs> right, so, so Newcastle come to City on uh, on Saturday. You haven't got the greatest record against us recently in the Premier League, have you? No, mate, it's, it's, I would say in large part it's due to the fact that we really struggle with number 10s <laughs> and with you having the best number 10 in the league, he tends to just torment with for his own pleasure uh, every single time. And the fact that you have just went and bought De Bruyne hardly makes us feel any better about the situation, if I'm honest with you. You're 19th anyway, um, yeah. se- second bottom. 19 uh, sounds better, mate. Let's go with that because <laughs> then if someone like from, I don't know, some part of the world that doesn't know... Uh, that's some part of the world that doesn't know, you know, what we're what we're talking about. We have forty teams in the league, maybe nineteenth doesn't sound bad. What's going on? What, what's the problem? Um, actually, in a weird way, I'm seeing improvements. A lot of people would say, "Oh, you know, the the look at the position in the league and think we're being terrible." But when you look at who we've played, all right, outside of Watford, you know, we played uh, Swansea, West Ham, also we played Chelsea, Manchester United, Arsenal. Hasn't been like Southampton, hasn't been an easy start. Yeah. And we've actually, normally we collapse when we play Man United, Arsenal, um, Chelsea, but we didn't this season. And I'm actually starting to see that we're not just bending over and being frightened anymore. We're actually having a go. So I think if we carry on with this strategy, it will get better. You say that you, you're doing really well against the top teams. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Because you've got to be beating the. The lesser teams, really, haven't you? Yeah, I think I think what happens is it's a motivation issue. And I think what happens is when we play an Arsenal, Man United or Chelsea, or hopefully a Manchester City, we're so frightened of getting absolutely hammered. We're so frightened now that we actually turn up. And it's the Watfords and the West Hams that seem to be given with the most problems. Well, I hope you don't turn up on Saturday anyway. Make, make it first, crossed. won't it? Fingers um, crossed. What, who's Newcastle's key man? You've bought really well, haven't you, this summer? for a, Maybe for a change? I mean, it's 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 we're unsure at the moment. That's what happens when you buy players who aren't sort of Premier League proven. It's all well and good buying players outside the Premier League if you're buying De Bruyne, who you know is guaranteed to deliver. But we are taking risks. You know, Tovan really has looked so hat and ben off our Remy Cabela number three. You know, he really looks like he's number three of them so far. But aside from that, Wijnaldum's looked decent and Bemba's looked decent. And Mitrovic, when he doesn't get sent off, looks like a very, you know, strong, proper number nine centre forward. So I'm quite happy with the signings. The main area I'm not happy with is the centre midfield, which for me, looking at Manchester City, the only time you have struggled a bit this season is when you have come up against a team who've been ready for you, like uh, Noble and Kayate at West Ham. So Spurs, when they had Dyer and uh, Ali, we've got Anita and Colback, who basically Yaya Torre looks like he probably babysit them. So that worries me. <laughs> well, you'll be happy to know that Torre's out. Is he? Squad tomorrow, yeah. So, Is he really? Yeah, oh, yeah. So you're <laughs> telling me there's a chance? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a bit more of a chance, but uh, oh. with Sterling, Silva, De Bruyne, and Aguero as a front four, it's not not too bad, is it? No, mate. I've been slagging off Raheem Sterling. Yeah. Um, not saying that he's a bad player by any means. He's a good player, but he's never in a million years a fifty million pound player, in no, my no. opinion. No, not yet. Um, but uh, you know, he's guaranteed to score because of that. Just <laughs> lump on it. Everyone jump on fifty million pound Raheem Sterling to score because I've been taking the Mickey out of it. As for Aguero, in my opinion, he is the best player in the Premier League, mate. He's absolutely unbelievable. Do you, do you want to slag him off, please? Like reverse it. <laughs> don't don't be praising him now honestly, so he doesn't score. Honestly, Aguero, no, he is the best player. Like a lot of people last season were saying Hazard and this, that, and the other. Aguero didn't even make it into the Premier League team of the season. And I was like, it's ridiculous that, like, it is, he's the best player in the league. Yeah, is that, that, I was going to ask you who scares you the most, but I think you're there. That, that's it, mate, Aguero. Well, actually, against Newcastle, it would be David Silva because we do struggle with that area in between the midfield and the defence and he just likes to sit there and pick one off. So he would be the the worst player for us to have to come up against. He's got a history of scoring against you lot as well. He doesn't score against many teams. but No, he's, a, he's the creator normally, but against us, I think he just has, has a field day. But my philosophy for Newcastle going into this game is basically what happened against Chelsea. We're expecting to lose. It's a, it's a freebie. Um, Manchester City's weakness, if there is one, is their defence, especially right now. So stick Perez and Mitrovic up front, big man, little man combination. 
punt it up and let's go for it. So that's how you think you can maybe do a job on us. Just how, how yeah. can you beat City? How how do you do it? Well, it's definitely possible. I mean, if when Spurs put four past us, it's definitely possible. Um, I think if uh, is company back for this game? No, he's out. Mangala's right. back. Well, Mitrovic could dominate Mangala and Demetrius uh, physically, um, and if we can get Ayose Perez just running off the balls, he can win in the air. We're going to have to have overcome a lot of pressure. We're going to have to defend well. Tim Cruz going to have to have a great game and goal first and foremost. If that doesn't happen, then it's a write off. Um, but going forward, we can we can definitely score goals against you. There's no two ways about that. It's just whether we can defend well enough, mate, and that's the problem. What are your thoughts on big Steve McLaren? Uh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Um, obviously, his England record left us terrified when we yeah. appointed him because it's like, you know, he basically had the best generation of players we've seen and he couldn't even qualify for a tournament with that. That really worried us. But a lot of people look at the out, from the outside in and look at Alan Pardew and what frustrated Newcastle fans. The results were all right. They weren't great. They weren't I mean, sometimes they were terrible. We'd often roll over a lot. He'd get with enough points in a season, but the performances would be absolutely shocking. With Steve McLaren, it's been the opposite. The performances actually haven't been too bad for the most part. It's the points that haven't come. Um, so I kind of knock the bloke for the performances. I just want, if the points come and we perform like we did against Chelsea in most games, I won't have any complaints. Right, let's get on to the, the big one score predictions. Um, Head and I'm heart. Gonna, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to say 3 2. To Manchester City, um, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a three-three or even a four-three for Newcastle. Mate. Four, three. I, I put, see a lot of goals. I'm, I see a lot of goals. If you put four past us, I would be. I'm going to be absolutely gutted. I'm going to go four. I don't know three-one. I think you lot will score first. It'll be some horrible deflection off Colachini's hair or <laughs> something ridiculous like that. But uh, just does a, a whip of the hair and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> the back of the net. That counts two goals, I think. Yeah, fingers crossed. Double well, points on Fantasy League. Cheers for coming on anyway. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's been great chatting to you, mate. And, uh, you know, good work with everything you're doing over at Blue Moon Rising. And uh, hello to all the subscribers. Cheers. Anyway, subscribers, comment below with your score predictions. We want to know what score you think it's going to be. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Obviously, you have because Geordie's on. And subscribe if you're not already. And we'll see you soon.